Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be going over something called a clutch slipper, uh, what it is, how they work, the different varieties of them, uh, just so that everybody can get a better understanding of what they are, how they work, and when you want one. <laughs> So clutch slipper, uh, when do you want one? So when you're launching a manual transmission vehicle or something that has a clutch, especially if you're in uh, either a very high horsepower all-wheel drive car, a front-wheel drive car, or a rear-wheel drive car, um, you don't want to dump the clutch because then you're just going to get a ton of tire spin if you're trying to take off fast, right? So what you usually end up having to do is slowly lift the clutch and drag the clutch up so it slips so you can accelerate without breaking traction. You want a clutch slipper to have to avoid doing that because your foot, sorry to break it to you, is not a great machine of precision. So every time you slip that clutch, it's going to be different. You're going to have inconsistencies every time you do it. Now on a drag strip or a racetrack, consistency is everything. You want that first 60 feet to be the same every single time so you can dial that thing in. That's why most really fast race cars are automatics because you can dial that in so it's almost perfect every single time. So how do you get that precision with a manual transmission vehicle? Now, there is such thing as an inertia-driven clutch slipper, which is a very expensive piece of tech, and it's typically only available for rear-wheel drive cars. Uh, so we're not gonna be discussing that here because again, that's like out of most people's reach and completely out of most people's necessity. So. Let's first go over how a normal clutch operates. So we have here my fantastic graph. We have our clutch uh, position over here, and then we have time passed here. So typically with a clutch, when you release the pedal, the position just drops right off and it releases the clutch fully. Uh, that's if you just dump the clutch. And that right there is just gonna quickly engage the clutch. You're gonna get either, you're either gonna stall the car or you're gonna break traction, which is no bueno. So the object of the game is to increase the time it takes for that clutch to fully activate while maintaining a certain amount of consistent, pre consistent pressure while that's happening. Now, the most common style of clutch slipper out there is what I call a mechanical clutch slipper. Uh, I'll put a picture of them right here. There are quite a few of them on the market, but they're all pretty much exactly the same thing. You have a solenoid, you have what is basically a restrictor valve, an adjustable restriction valve, uh, some lines, and some switches, and that's it. When you release that with it activated, it slowly lets the clutch out. So on this graph, you can see, instead of going straight down to the engagement point, it's sliding its way down. So the clutch is slowly slipping, but it's getting more and more pressure as we go. Now, this works, but it's extremely touchy. The more the clutch wears, after a pull, fluid temperatures, a whole bunch of things, how hard you release, a bunch of things can adjust how this works. So it works, it's a very common thing to be used uh, in racing. Uh, it's just the consistency side of it is a little bit difficult. I like to use the example of uh, the Booster Boys since I have a feeling a lot of you watch them. Uh, when they were trying to get a uh, world record in the MR2, you'll notice that they were having a really hard time dialing in their launch. They would adjust their clutch slipper and, and it would do too much or too little or it wouldn't do the same thing the next time around. And they constantly were battling that. Uh, that right there is an example of the difficulties that come with that. So if you're going to say just a street night at the drag strip, and you're only gonna get one, two, maybe three passes in, you don't want it to be fiddling with your launch that entire time. You kind of want to get it set up, and that way the next time you go track from time after that, time after that, it does the same thing over and over again. Or if you're doing no prep racing or Mexico racing, uh, same thing. You don't have a lot of chances to get that set up. Or if you're in an actual tournament or race tournament where it's heads up, you can't mess that launch up five, six, seven times. You got to get that going. So if you dial this in, you can get a fairly consistent launch, but you are still fighting the fact that it's a mechanical system with a lot of give in either direction. So that brings us to the next style clutch slipper system, which I call a digital clutch slipper. Now, right now, there's one of them on the market that I know of. I'm sure there might be like a, another one somewhere. 
and we're going to get to that in a second. But a digital clutch slipper is much, much, much more precise. So a digital clutch slipper can actually hold a clutch at a specific spot for a specific amount of time to get the exact amount of slip you want and then release the clutch from there. And that looks like this. So we release our clutch, it drops down to the position that we want, and then we hold it there for however long we want, and then it drops down to the full engagement point. And this right here, how high or low your engagement point is, is determined by you. And it will be the same every single time. That's not to say that this is perfect. There's really no perfect way of doing this, but this is much, much, much more consistent than a mechanical slipper and way more consistent than your foot. So that's kind of the differences between, you know, the different methods of slipping a clutch, but how do they work? What are their components? So on a mechanical clutch slipper, as I mentioned before, you have a solenoid, which basically bypasses the main clutch line and sends it through the restriction system when you're in say first gear or you're holding a button down or something like that. Um, and then when you release the clutch, it slows the clutch fluid down by going through uh, that restrictor, which I have one right here, just an adjustable knob on the top, which changes the size of the orifice on the inside, which changes how much uh, fluid can bypass and how fast it can. Uh, a digital clutch slipper works almost the same way, except we're just holding the fluid at a certain point. Uh, works kind of like a line lock for your brakes going to burnouts. So what happens is, is you release the clutch and then when the clutch gets to a certain point after a certain amount of time, it then locks that solenoid, it closes the solenoid, which is the same solenoid that, which can be, well, can be the same solenoid uh, that is used for the mechanical slippers. Uh, it locks the solenoid and holds the clutch there until you're ready for it to release. And it's really that simple. The hard part of the digital side is the programming of it and the electronics of it. Which brings me to the fact that right now there's only one available in the market because soon there's going to be two. This right here is the Fast Religion Digital Clutch Slipper. Uh, designed here, we've been working on this for over six months now, and we finally have a finished working version. Now, the screen for some reason is not coming up. Um, so it's completely adjustable here, no need for a computer, separate uh, phone app or anything like that. It's all right here. We have our delay time. So how long after the clutch does it, after the clutch is released, does it lock? And we have the activation time. How long does it hold it in that position for? And it's very easy to adjust. You can see it's extremely fine adjustments. And we have the delay so that you can go to 0.1 of a second, all the way down to zero, 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 0001 of a second. Let me set that back to about where we need it. And then the activation time can go from zero seconds all the way up to two and a half seconds. And the way this works is you obviously don't want this activating when you're going down the track if you are using your clutch to shift. So this on our specific car is our two-step button. So when this two-step button is pushed down, that is now armed and we're gonna push our clutch down. And then when I release the clutch, it's going to hold it. That simple. And now, unless I push that button down again to activate this, it's going to work as normal. So again, hold it down for two step to the floor. We're gonna launch the car, full throttle, wop, 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 wop. And then we are going to launch the car. And it holds, and then it releases. Fully adjustable right there. What is the benefit of this one over the other ones that are on the market? This is really simple, um, extremely simple. So if you know how a clutch works, when you press the clutch pedal down, there's a one-to-one -one movement ratio. So if your clutch pedal moves, you know, all the way down 100%, the clutch is going to push in 100% of your uh, slave cylinder. You're not really worried about your clutch pressure so much as you are worried about your clutch position. Now it is important to monitor your clutch pressure, which we have a monitoring on here and I'll show you that in a second. But the important thing is, is you want to make sure you can release that clutch to the right position for the correct amount of slip. And the best way to do that I have found is through a time adjustment. This is extremely repeatable. 
you're going to get the exact same position every single time. If your clutch wears out or you need to change it, you know, it's right here to adjust. And obviously, like, it works with the car. So I'll just shut the car off and the system shuts off. Turn the car back on. And the system turns back on. I'm sorry that this isn't showing up great. It's just extremely bright for that. Now, we are working on manufacturing these right now um, and sending out a couple of tests. But if you would be interested in getting into the pre-release of these or you'd be interested in being a test vehicle for these, please feel free to reach out. Contact information is on our website. Uh, link is down below. Uh, but this right here, I think is gonna be quite the game changer. Now the question is going to be price. Uh, right now, including the solenoid, the price is looking like it's gonna be about $300. Uh, that $300 gets you this with the Deutsche connector already on the wiring. You get the other side of Deutsche connector with the pins, uh, so you can use your own wiring. It comes with the assembly and it comes with the solenoid itself. We're also going to be offering it without the solenoid to make it a little bit cheaper. And you can convert your existing mechanical slippers into digital ones without having to buy another solenoid and spend that money again. So you know, I'll just show this again. So let's turn this way down. So it's like instant and let's turn this way up. So it's like a long time. Two step, clutch, release. Just like that. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, this is an informational video, not about selling those slippers, but you know, if you want to buy one, let me know. Uh, I hope that this told you everything you need to know about clutch slippers, and I hope that if you didn't know this sort of thing existed, now you do. So if you were struggling at the racetrack, now you know that there is a solution to your problem out there. Uh, so again, thank you for watching, and do what my daughter says. Like and subscribe. Yeah.